ooh, ooh. Hey, how you doing? Guys, hello. Welcome, everybody, to the Wolf Den Podcast. I'm just so glad that you're here. And also, uh, Zeon's here. Hello. Um, hey, how's it going? Ah, Thanks for having me. I hit the wrong button. Oh, no. <laughs> Listen, I haven't used this setup since we did remote Wolf Den podcasts. So actually, no, since we did, uh, yeah, no, since we did, that was a long time ago. Oh, that was like wow. two years yeah. ago. Also, I forgot to turn off uh, stream sounds, and we have a little Italian lady that reads all the stream sounds. I'm gonna beat those right now. Uh, really, Zion, how you doing? Good to see you. I'm doing, I'm doing we don't, good. we I'm don't get to talk too much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the three-hour time zif- difference is not the worst, but mm. yeah, we don't we don't get the chance to sit down. We, like we this. send oh. each other uh, little uh, videos through iMessage. That's true. <laughs> that's yes, about, that's actually, about it. I as do much see as you get. more. I do probably see you more than like most like long-distance friends, honestly, <laughs> in in that regard. Uh, so, how you doing? How's everything been? You just posted an hour and twenty-minute-ish long video, right? That was a kind of a month ago, maybe at this right. point. Yeah, I mean, it still feels it's it's weird because yeah, you it, it was so recent, um, but it it still wasn't at the same time because it yeah like was such a huge chunk of my life and like took so much from me to edit, you know, as as you can imagine. Mm-hmm. Um, that uh, yeah, it still uh, like I still think like, I still go check the views and the comments like every single day basically and, and i'm always reading them and i know people say not to read the comments but this video has been people have been really nice ha, have, um, are you sick of people associating you with street pass calling you the street pass guy no no i love that <laughs> i okay, absolutely good. love it when i was at summer game fest there were multiple people that like came up to me or like would walk by and like point and say my name or something and then like ask if i had my my 2ds or 3ds whatever you want to call it on me and uh, of course like i always like i had it in a clear in the clear bag uh, so, around my so, around my side. So. so what's the count for this year? Because the video was oh, for last year, right? You know, I haven't really been counting. I do have. I How haven't could you not it be counting? Because I it was I was so tired. <laughs> You're so <laughs> sick of counting. Yeah, it's like you know when you when you like finish a video game and you don't want to play it again for like ten years. Yeah, that's a little bit how it feels. Okay. but um, but it's different, you know, because Street Pass is like. You know, it's not something I can just find. So I still, I'm still taking this thing with me when I go to, you know, on trips or when I went to the event. Um, but yeah, the the count is not, it's not, it's not high. Maybe it's 15 or something. Oh wow! But, so, but so not, yeah. To, to to be clear, your video mm. was your year long journey trying to get as many street passes as possible. Uh, That's right. In the in the year 2023, which uh, is not easy to do because nobody carries their 3ds anymore. Yeah, uh, and that ended at, at the end of the year. So you started your count again, and I guess you're not going as hard. So 15 uh, is way less than what you got well, last at this time last year. Honestly, I think this this year might be a little like null and void for like just counting the numbers. Because one one thing um, that I guess I didn't consider until now that you mentioned it is the fact that like at the on January 1st of 2024, I turned wireless functionality off of my 3DS. So that way I wouldn't get any more street passes because I didn't want to mess up the numbers and I wanted to be able to have like, Oh, like the, while the... you were working on the video. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, so I, I just okay. left it. Um, and, uh, so we actually, uh, and so I'm now, now I've turned it back on and I've, I've gotten a couple random street passes just like not in the city that I live in, but like I went up to Portland one day and I got a random street pass there, and that was that was nuts. Um, <laughs> that was nuts. That was, that was that just was like the a week craziest ago. thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> it does, honestly, it does. It feels like in 2024, like just walking by somebody within a you know 50 or 100 mile radius, and they also had a system on them, or maybe it was yeah. charging in a store or something, or in their backpack. I don't know, but um, but that does feel a little a little crazy. So um, we we did yeah. a podcast last year while you were in the middle of it. Uh, oh well, right, it was kind of at the beginning of it, I guess. Uh, with, on the Nintendo podcast, you were on and we talked about yeah. it a little bit. Um, but that was at the beginning. Now it's all done and over with. You kind of did a lot to try to get yourself as many street passes as possible. Like you did meetups and stuff. Yeah. How many do you think you would have gotten if you didn't do any of that stuff? If you just tried to meet random people. That wow. just so happen to have yeah. DSs with them. Well, I think mm, that would have been a fun experiment. Um, you know, like I, it, 
I wish we could see what those numbers would look like because I think it would it would have had to have been a lot lower because uh, I think I, there were a lot of people that there were a lot of people that would come up and apologize to me at events <laughs> because they didn't have it on them and they didn't you know owe me that or anything but they still like felt the need to um, to you know tell me that they they wronged me or something in that sense you know and so I think I think the word of mouth really carried really far and did a lot in in that regard um, so yeah I don't know maybe maybe half or less. Uh, I think like, cause I went to both PAX East and PAX West and you know, cause, cause you did these meetups and there were like, you know, like oh, right. the one that I went to at PAX, there was like a hundred people there. And yeah. that's a hundred street passes you wouldn't have gotten otherwise. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Cause yeah, I think at PAX West, I think I got around, oh, it was PAX West combined with Nintendo Live. And I think I got like around 150 there. And uh, and there were a couple other gaming conventions that I went to as well, where I got around fifty to a hundred. And I mean, you did have other like kind of people in this in the gaming space, like Metal Jesus. I remember tweeted at one point that he was going to a retro event, and that's that it's mentioned in the video. But I think he probably like you know convinced a bunch of other people like to dig it out of the their closet or out of their drawer or whatever and charge it up or um, yeah. So I think, me. dude, that that's true. That's true. You made so me so I happy. I uh, used to bring my 3DS everywhere because I used to also like grind in those street passes and I would bring them to conventions. Uh, this was before, you know, YouTube or anything. So I would bring it to like New York Comic Con and usually you'd uh -huh. get like a ton, even just going into the city, you know, taking the train in, you would get a bunch of street passes. And then very quickly uh, towards the end of like, maybe like the middle of the Wii U life cycle, maybe towards the end of it, almost nothing ever even bringing oh, it yeah. to a convention there was almost never any street passes so people and this was even i think before the, before the switch came out you're saying yeah too, right? before the switch i the people just kind of stopped bringing their 3ds's with them or i guess if they did they didn't necessarily care about the street pass maybe it was just kind of uh something people were really interested in when it first came out and then uh didn't really keep up with it like we did because we were just really excited about yeah a nintendo thing we were like oh this is cool i want to try to collect yeah. as many things as possible when in, in that in that light as well you know there there's there's this i used to work at a game store and there was this oh one God, customer that too. would come in oh yeah right we i, I forget during we have... the 3ds uh, uh life so oh, i think right. i bought my what 3ds you know? when i worked there so i used to keep it with me so people would so, always get my street pass while i was working did you get the ambassador system then too? Like the first yes. first run or did you? Nice. Yeah. Okay. It was sweet. like expensive and stupid and I regretted it until yeah. they gave me 20 free games. And then I was like, this is the yeah. coolest fucking thing. Yeah. It's good, good stuff in there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there was, there was a customer when I worked like this was years, years after the 3DS came out. I think the switch might have even like just come out at this point. And there was a customer that was really into their 2DS or 3DS and uh, and they really wanted a street pass with me and like any of my coworkers. And they would ask like every time they came in, they were doing exactly what I did where they would just like bug the hell out of people. Um, and uh, <laughs> and I like back then, this was probably like 2017, 2018. I just didn't care about street pass at all. And I found it really annoying uh, that this customer was like bugging me all the time. And like, I think I did bring it in a couple of times to street pass them. <laughs> um, and, uh, but like in hindsight now, like I reflect on that and I'm like, wow, I was a real, I was a real jerk. Uh, I, you know, <laughs> why, why, why was I like that? You know, when people have shown me so much kindness with this project that I've been, you know, that I worked on last year. Um, so yeah, I just uh, it. I don't know. I guess I'm I'm always a little bit of a sentimental human, always trying to look back and see how I can better myself. But like, but that was. I uh, mean, that doesn't necessarily mean you're a terrible person just because you didn't have Street Pass set up on your 3ds. <laughs> I just didn't want to bring it in, or like I'd bring it in and like I wouldn't have the charger. But like it was a game store, so wait, like yeah, you could just we would have chargers. Up. Yeah, I don't know what the my game store was, was cool. extremely laid back. We just almost nobody ever came in. We just played our handhelds all sure. day pretty much yeah. <laughs> good good i'm glad it was i'm glad it was chill so if you haven't seen this youtube video it's mm. over on the nintendo life channel uh just go it is and very search long up. i'm actually i think if you just go to youtube and look up street pass i bet you it comes right up yeah it it probably yeah i would it's imagine the, it it's would. the first thing that came up when i did that you know I one thing i do want to mention 365 days I do want to mention too that like this video when it first came out, it the views were not like I was a little sad, I think. 
just because, you know, I put, you know, whenever anyone I think puts in a ton of amount of effort into something, I think they like, they like it when people, you know, appreciate it or see it, especially I think a video, because a video is, in my opinion of a video is you're designing it for people to enjoy. You know, I mean, there's there's a sense of yourself putting your your own creativity in there and all that, but um, but the video wasn't doing that well, um, and now it's almost at a hundred thousand views, uh, and uh, it just I, like you also have yeah. to consider that it is a hour and twenty two minute long video, so a view True. on this video counts as like five or six videos. <laughs> that's so, a really good point i've not really considered that because i thought that too when you posted the video after like two days i was like "Ooh, that's really not as many views as i thought and then i was like wait it is an hour and 20 minute long video yeah. so if the well, video was, was if the video was like a quarter of the length you would probably have four times the views yeah when see I'll, there were people like in my community that told me like you got to make this shorter man you got to make this shorter and when i didn't I, I don't like, think so, honestly. I, I think that there is a place on YouTube for just long, like, uh, video essays. A, a lot of YouTubers are, are, you know, making a killing doing just that. You get paid more, I think. If you can hold people's retention, mm, uh, it's it's worth it more than just, like, a quick little throwaway video. As somebody who never makes long videos. <laughs> I mean, my <laughs> videos are pretty much always 15 to 20 minutes long. Uh, which some would say is long, but I think that's like yeah, a pretty normal length. I mean, you're definitely, you don't make short videos. You don't make shorts. Yeah. Well, actually, you I do don't, make shorts. I just don't make uh, hour long videos. That's too much. I tried, well, it was one time, I think I got up to like 45 minutes and I wanted to kill myself. Yeah. I'm still here that, though. So. This is the second hour long video I've ever made. And I like don't, it's not that I don't want to do it again, but I said that the first time I made one and mm -hmm. then I made another one. So it'll happen again, you know, just. A different topic or something i feel like i haven't addressed our viewers in a while hello uh we are only Whoa. on twitch today because i fucked up everything uh <laughs> i usually restream using some plugin and for whatever reason the plugin wasn't working uh, on this computer so i just decided screw it youtube people will get the video just like they used to always get it which is posted later so that's not a big deal we're prioritizing twitch for the live stream as of right now but so thanks for being here also thank you farmer gooch for uh doing a five dollar super chat on the stream that wasn't working so <laughs> i appreciate that uh also we got the green loki thank you for the prime sub spank wise thanks for 35 months never miss a month for bob oh my god thank you so much uh junior moser thanks for the 22 so nice. months happy tuesday error yeah no you're wrong oh yeah we're on this is we're on a wednesday this Ooh, is a weird time for us that's good that's good uh till 23 thanks for the 15 months and the konami man thanks for the 19 months been trying to renew my prime subscription ever since the twitch app changed and it fully went through thank god prime sub i think is okay on the twitch app if you're gonna do any other sub just go to your computer or go to a web browser or something because uh uh the i think apple and google both take a cut of the subscription on there mm. so it costs more so don't do that on the phone also uh thank you people in the chat who were telling people that we were having restream issues i'm sorry also my dad's here wolf den dad says son one ak will looks so much different without his hat on he's also got I'm, way more hair now <laughs> i was i i mean i i was considering trying to like dress up like him but the glasses i have aren't they don't really match so i just mm. didn't i just tossed that idea out the window but um, it's good to see your dad here, though. I'm a big fan. <laughs> big fan. See that? You have one fan, dad. Uh, I don't remember what video it was that you showed me, but yeah, he was he was great. <laughs> uh, there's another... We got things that we wanted to talk about. We got actual news that we're going to talk True. about eventually. True. Uh, the actual news is that MEO thing that Zeon's very happy about. Uh, oh, yeah. I also wanted to talk about the analog pocket aluminum uh, and some mm -hmm. other stuff. Mm -hmm. Microsoft is selling a, a console that doesn't come with a console yeah um, no i like that no console honestly not a lot happened this week before we get into all that stuff you just got a steam deck and i want to talk about oh. your experiences with the steam deck as a nintendo diehard okay so I, when did you I get it and how much have you been using it sure so i got it at summer game fest i bought it from a friend and there's like a funny tweet out there. I don't know if you saw it, but it's like of us like shaking hands 
and uh, I'm like pretending that I'm selling him my 2DS and like some cash. <laughs> and it's, so it's like a, it's like a handshake hand like trade. And then he's handing me the Steam Deck. And uh, yeah, so thank you. Thank you, Sean, for that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I got it for a really nice price, which was really cool. And, uh, I've spent so much money on steam games now that I, you know, that's how it works. I don't they, know when I'm going to play them. They just had the sale. So you definitely yeah. just spent a lot of money on that. Perfect timing. Yeah. Yeah. Like I bought so... Kingdom Hearts one, two HD remix, whatever it's called, even though okay. I already own them on PS4 <laughs> and owned them on, I own them on PS2. Oh, those not on the switch. They are, but only in cloud form. Oh yeah, yeah. That sucks. So they're yeah, and the the thing that killed me about that was like I've I've played Kingdom Hearts one back in the day and loved it, and I I when when Sora came to Kingdom Hearts or when wow when Sora came to Smash, I uh, I replayed one and I've never really like played two. I've I've booted it up like four or five times and restarted every time and made it like five hours in. So I always wanted to have it portably so that way I like never had an excuse to put it down. And so when it came to the switch in the cloud form, like that just, that, that made me mad, you know, it, it didn't work. It didn't, it didn't fit the need that I had. Um, and it runs so good on the steam deck. I'm so like, yeah, that's it's a great. theme with, uh, the steam deck versus the, the switch. I feel like there's a lot of hoops you got to go through to get a game up and running on the switch versus the steam deck. Everything seems to just, they, developers seem to just be able to fart things out onto it. Even mm -hmm. if it's not specifically made for the, the Linux architecture or anything, uh, things seem to just work just fine for the most part. They're like yeah. proton layer that adapts to stuff seems to be just fine. But I think it's more so that uh, the Steam uh, uh, platform uh, just green lights things. They don't really seem to care. And the oh, eShop has a little more, uh, I guess, some more politics. At least uh, indie developers have to go through a lot of like approvals and stuff. Meanwhile, Steam, you can oh, just really? fart to some get, games up to onto get it. games on. Yeah, yeah. Like every That's indie so developer funny. that we talked to, at least for the last couple of years, I talked to you about this when you got the Steam Deck and you showed it to me. Um, oh, oh, yeah. When, when, like for years, you know, my channel was mostly focused on Switch stuff. So we'd go to like these conventions, and I would see a new game, and I'm like, oh, this game looks awesome. So when is it? coming to the switch and they'll be like well it's on steam now but it's coming to the switch uh no word yet <laughs> right we're, yeah we're hoping it'll be on the switch they always say that we're we're hoping it'll come to yeah. the switch eventually and then like, I always two, like the, a year or two later yeah. it'll come to the switch yeah Whereas I, always, now, I, always like the, like, I can just get it on the steam deck and start playing it immediately and that, that was the thing that you pointed out too is like how many demos are available on the steam deck because there are quite a few like i'm always surprised by how many demos are available on the switch uh but there's there more like... now than there used to be. Uh, oh, developers yeah. seem to be uh, trying to make demos, but Nintendo has to approve those demos too. Oh, where Steam's just like, yeah, sure. I mean, they, there is plus, like twenty one plus a, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> there is an approval process, but it's a lot more laid back than it okay. is on on the Switch. For whatever reason, yeah, I'm 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 loving it. I have so many like there are so many games that I can't play on. Uh, on the Switch that I think uh, that's mostly what I'm taking advantage of it for. Like I bought Hi-Fi Rush uh, and have played a couple levels and it runs really well. Like it, it doesn't. And I think as like an avid Switch user, mm -hmm. I think graphically, maybe I'm like less picky about how stuff runs on the Steam Deck, you know? So maybe maybe Hi-Fi Rush doesn't run as well as it could on a normal PC or a Series X or something or PS5, I guess. But um, but I don't care. It just it runs smooth and it, it plays great. I think before the Switch and before the Steam Deck, uh, if you told somebody you were playing a, a new AAA game at like 30 <laughs> frames per second, like 720p with like no shadows or anything, they'd be like, why are you playing the worst version? Or like 560p, some of these yeah. games. Like, why are you, why are you, that sounds gross. But you're playing it portably. And like, we don't yeah. care. We just want it to be stable and uh i want my inputs to be read when i press them i want the thing to happen mm -hmm. and that's it i don't care if it's a little ugly i'd like it to be as pretty as possible but for the most part my brain can fill in the blanks <laughs> it's it's crazy that we've come to a point now where um i mean i because I, I remember when like maybe you, you have like your own kind of memories or stories of this but i remember like when there was a kingdom hearts game that came to the ds and it was like maybe three five eight days over two divided by seven add six minus twelve 
some game, whatever. Uh, I probably <laughs> messed the name up a little bit there, but um, but that game, I remember when it came to the the DS, I was like, this is running on the DS. Even with like Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D, I was like, no way. This looks like it would run on my Nintendo Wii. How do they get that in, in a in a handheld? <laughs> yeah. And now we're at the point, right, where like the the Steam Deck probably runs just as or better right than in in handheld mode than what the switch runs docked I'm, i mean i don't know that for certain don't quote me on any of that stuff but but that's how it feels it feels I mean, it like depends we, on we the really game, can play so much but yeah. you're you're right i mean the switch is uh i mean the switch is seven years old so it's it's Ooh, been a while and, and even back. even seven years ago uh it was old architecture it was it was old stuff that was in it so yeah it's 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 getting time for 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 a little refresh. What is it that the that Nintendo used to say something um, withered tech? I don't remember what the what the full phrase is, but from Gunpei Yokoi, the creator of the Game Boy, mm -hmm. uh, I think he said something, or maybe I'm probably misinterpreting it. This, but there's some quote about them like loving to use withered technology and making making it affordable for consumers, and um, it's crazy that they still carry that forward today with the Switch, but. It, it seem well. It seems like they've never cared about uh, the being the at the forefront of technology. They just want it to be fun and and nice. It reminds me a lot yeah. of uh, of Apple. Although Apple, I think, kind of moves tech forward a little bit. But Apple is always like a little behind. But they make the tech that everyone else has been using way better. They they like ah, package mm -hmm. it in, in a neater way. Uh, and a, a more user-friendly way than what other people have been doing. Uh, but they're never really like at the forefront of technology. You know, they're always a little behind, but like spec-wise, they're a little behind, but they always got, you know, they, they make it nice. And I think Nintendo does a similar thing. Uh, probably more to an extreme though, because they're really behind. Yeah. Uh, people in the chat just want to let you know, you're a great guy. People really like you. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's so nice. I'm, I'm peering over at the chat. Everybody's like, oh my God, Zeon. Oh my God. That's so tell sweet. Him I, all the, everyone in the chat is like, tell him I said hi as if they're not here <laughs> and you can't read it. That's great. Um, well, they're all so sweet too. And so are you. And like genuinely, <laughs> thanks thanks for having me on. This was really. Oh, thanks for doing it. Really, so really last nice. minute too. Yeah, you can. Uh, in any, any, there's never a last minute. Uh, I'm going to also thank Crim Cat for the eight months. Nice. Been a while since I've watched two long hair boys in a podcast. Oh, my God. Been a while. And both and of us have our hair tucked away. I know. We did not plan this. Uh, <laughs> and Kiba Fish, thank you for the Prime subscription. You don't Twitch stream, right? I uh, thought about get I, I have thoughts about getting back into it every so often, um, but I don't right now. I do have one, and I did stream for like a couple months. And I think it's just still at Zeon Dude, uh, D O O D. But uh, it was fun. I liked it. Okay. Uh, why? Why? Why'd you ask? I didn't even. Uh, because consider. now you're on Twitch, and I'm reading all these notifications, and it must be really annoying if you don't know. If oh. You're not, <laughs> if you're not a Twitch streamer. No, no, no. I do still watch people from time to time, though, too. So it. Okay. Like you, actually, I'll come hang out every so often. Not oh that god. often, but. But sometimes. Oh my god. And then you're like, "Hey, what's up?" And I'm like, "Oh." That's oh so my nice. god. Oh my god, he read my chat message. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Uh, all right, let's get right up. H3 Catacomb. Cat eight hecka hecka I don't know. This, I can't read this guy's name. Thank you for gifting oh five subs. I appreciate That's amazing. It. Wow. Uh, he's really nice. He's a nice guy. That's really cool. Uh, anyway, uh, let's talk about the news. Finally. Uh, no, oh yeah, there is. There is news. The podcast. You're right. uh, let's talk about this Emio thing. Uh, you tell me about it. Mm. <laughs> I know all oh. I know about it is Nintendo <laughs> dropped a really cryptic trailer. They sure uh, did. They just called it Emmy. Well, first it launched in like the, the Japanese trailer came up, and it was just a guy with a bag over his head uh, <laughs> that had like a smiley face drawn on it. Yeah, it uh, totally looks like someone hacked the account. Yeah, and then it had some Japanese characters that spelled out the smiling man oh, uh, right and that was launched on like the japanese twitter account uh and then like a few hours later it was launched on the american or the uk account i forgot which one uh and it said emio instead of the smiling man uh so it gave us no new information uh but now i think as of today we know what it is yeah, and that was exactly seven days ago the youtube tells us oh okay 
So this here that I'm playing right now is the trailer that was uh, launched first. Oh, yeah. They now since renamed it MEO the Smiling Man Famicom Detective Club. Uh, oh, they so did. Nice. Today, today they uh, finally said that it's Famicom Detective Club. For a week, everyone was kind of speculating what it could be. I thought it might have been uh, what's that picture game? The game with the picto chat um no. uh you got ds swap? on the brain uh, uh fatal frame i thought it was fatal frame <laughs> yeah wow i love how like camera and picture like just those two words just did not sync up at all because <laughs> if you said camera i would have been like oh yeah yeah i got, I got you but <laughs> all, all we had going was that it was a horror game and that it was rated yeah. m because it did have an age rating on it uh and it was rated m for like really like bizarre reasons like uh uh violence uh, s- uh sexual uh abuse was was yeah. on it <laughs> yeah it was really hardcore and like i yeah. was talking with i was talking with my buddy john who uh used to do nintendo life stuff and does good vibes gaming now and we were dming about it and i was like dude i saw someone made a comment on our video that we put out about it saying like what if this is a famicom detective club game and I, my my gears got turning, and I was talking to John, and John was like, "I don't know, man. That age rating is really high. Like, <laughs> Famic- the Famicom Detective Club games like cover some really like deep and sad stuff, but like this ESRB rating is really scary. And uh, yeah. and I you know I, at the same time I was like, I get what you mean. I totally understand. It's probably not Famicom Detective Club. It's probably not Eternal Darkness." Fatal Frame did make the most sense because we haven't seen a new, like we've seen remakes, but we haven't gotten a new game in that series in, I think it's been years. I think it's been a really long time. Yeah, and, and that's uh, not a series yeah. they can just suddenly like age down, you know, so th- that would, that's oh, owned mm-hmm. by Nintendo. And if they're going to make a new one, it would have to be, you know, within the themes of the old ones. So that made sense to me. And I just heard somebody else say that it was Fatal Frame. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. What else could it be? I totally. never in a million yeah, think, years considered Famigom Detective Club. I think that's like the fair mindset to have with it though, right? Is like what else? What like is Nintendo really shipping a brand new uh horror IP uh, <laughs> which is a fun like world to live in and think about and in a way Famicom Detective Club like kind of like is because nobody really gives a crap about the series for the <laughs> most part um except for the people that have played it and really liked it and it, it, that's a small that's a small amount of people, um, but yeah, I'm one so, of them. I, I did like it. So we, these are games that only came out in Japan for the Famicom. And then what, just like two years ago, they released it for, uh, they it was released a like longer, a remaster four, four <sighs> years ago. That's a long time ago. I know. I, I, time is awful. We've been doing I'm, I'm going to look that long. up right now too. Let's so see. yeah, they they re they they like did like a remaster uh for mm-hmm. or a remake I guess uh they did it for yeah no, you're the right Switch. totally like from the ground up yeah uh digital only though uh this was 2021 so three years ago we split the difference and wow okay there you go. hey I I like that uh so yeah digital only and it did they they translated it for America so uh you played it I guess yeah Is that the yeah I played you played. It. Yeah, so they they did um, in Japan. They released three Famicom Detective Club games, if I remember right. There's oh. like the girl who stands behind, and then the missing heir. And I played the missing heir, which is the second one, but they can totally be played out of order. And uh, yeah, they're visual novel adventure games. I I don't remember if Sakamoto directed or wrote the scripts, but like uh, oh yeah, the, oh he's the designer. So, uh, Yoshio Sakamoto is the um, oh. I think he was the designer of uh, of Metroid as well. Oh. And so these games like have kind of for fans uh, of Nintendo or like hardcore fans, they've they've been something also I also think... rhythm heaven. Oh no way. Love love and WarioWare. Love Dang. this guy. Wow, what a weird what a weird <laughs> weird lad. That's yeah. Yeah, it'd be great to talk to him. Um but yeah, so I think it, it's it was for a long time it was one of those things that people just like wanted to play. And there were fan translations. And I think there's a third game that came to like the Super Nintendo Satellaview. And we still have not seen that one. Oh. Um, so it's pretty wild that this one uh, is a brand new game, uh, getting a, a full like retail release, like a physical physical edition. Um, and uh, and that Sakamoto is is back. Uh, it looks like he's producing the game, which I I don't really know. I need to learn what a producer does a bit better. I think they just kind of oversee and make sure things get done by the right so, people and stuff, you know. But uh, what's his name? 
uh, Sakurai just posted a YouTube oh. video. And, and like there right was like now? a. I saw it uh, yesterday or two days ago. I oh, saw okay. a screenshot where he explained what a producer does. Uh, oh, and really? he said, but I. I think it's like movies where a producer could be anything really like uh, it, they could have as hmm. much invo- like a lot of involvement or a little bit of involvement. But the way uh, Sakurai put it was that they do they handle uh, a PR and, and, and stuff like that and, and talking to like, okay. the press. But uh, a producer could also mean uh, uh, hiring people and putting things together. So I don't necessarily sure. know. I think yeah, maybe, a producer maybe could wear many hats. Project, right? I see what yeah, you mean. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I just I just watched I just finished watching the entire Double Fine like Psych Odyssey documentary. And if you've not seen have you watched any of that by chance? It's I so good. I saw the Double Fine documentary for uh oh my god. When when they did uh uh Is it for the adventure game? They or did like the, the the point and I click? think I don't remember they did like a game jam. And uh, oh, um, this is in like 2012. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, God. What do they call it? Ah, oh. a- a- Amnesia, Amnesia, Amnesia Fortnite. Fortnite. Yes. And nice. that, was, that was when they got just so happened to get bought by Microsoft. And like just like uh, a few uh-huh. weeks ago, there was clips circulating from that where everybody was all pissed off that they got bought by Microsoft. And a guy from Microsoft came in and had to talk right. to them. Yeah. And, Matt Booty from mad yeah, Microsoft came in. So yeah. that that clip was from the psychonauts documentary which also covers oh, that amnesia fortnite but okay. but you're not wrong they they did a separate or they did multiple separate like amnesia fortnite documentaries that you can just I remember watch that documentary movie. was was multiple parts uh, uh okay so i i think it is the the psychonauts documentary that i'm thinking of but i want to go back and right. watch it again because it yeah it, it it goes over so many details but um, it's one of the best gaming documentaries for sure yeah is it crazy man god <laughs> I'd love it's to make crazy that like that came that, out in never. 2012 and gamer documentaries haven't gotten better. <laughs> oh, so well, so that one came out. The Psychonauts one came out last last year, I think. But they that team has done like they did a Minecraft one. Um, they did uh, one for the game Broken Age, which was a Double Fine game. Um, and they've yeah they've done a couple others since because this one covers just Psychonauts. Well, not just it covers Psychonauts two. Um, and then like this VR game that they made. And I realize I'm, der- I'm really derailing us. I'm so sorry. No, 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 This is how the show is. Works. This what happens. Okay, cool. Um, but Did they not cover psycho. Oh wait. Amnesia Fortnite returns calming tensions with the studio as everyone takes a much needed break from psycho nuts. <laughs> oh, good goodness. <laughs> so that is the amnesia Fortnite documentary. I think. Is, is that what they call it? Is the amnesia Fortnite documentary? Cause I think. Right? They is, call it is the Amnesia Fortnite thing? movie. No, wait, no, this is different. Oh, what did I see? This says 2023. So they also have episodes of the Psych Odyssey documentary where mm-hmm. they just they have different Amnesia Fortnite events. Um, the I one that I saw two. had the guy from uh, Adventure Time in it. He like participated oh, yeah. in it. That's uh-huh. how long ago um, it was. Pendleton Ward is that his name? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. I just yeah, that was so crazy. Dude, I love Double Fine is insane. I don't know like how they they know all these people, they make the most creative stuff, and then they also just like have a camera crew that films everything. <laughs> and then they get bought by Microsoft and they're good. So that's cool. <laughs> well, why were we bringing that up? Oh, cuz they were talking about what a producer does. We <laughs> yeah, went, we, yeah, went, went like, we went down yeah. a rabbit hole. <laughs> Well, but if we, if we were just hanging out, that would that's just what happens. I suppose that's, that's really nice. That's just what happens. Anyway, uh, no. hey, we're getting a new Famicom Detective Club game, everybody. I'm very <laughs> excited. Is. I will I'm going to I'm probably going to buy it like I mean even though I might just get code for it, I'm still going to buy it anyways cuz I just want I want to support. I feel I want I have the GameStop mentality in that regard like, "Oh, games comes game comes out, I got to put my money out there." Uh, it's I only gotta, 50 I bucks. Tell them. Okay, so that's okay. Good. Uh, this will be the first Nintendo published game to feature sexual abuse. So if you're excited about that, then God. you can pre-order Famicom Detective Club. Comes out August 29th. Wow. <laughs> Damn. So Damn Nintendo. Different <laughs> different times, truly, different, for Nintendo. Yes, oh, of course. Uh, anyway, uh, 
that's that. Next news. Let's jump right into uh, the analog, all metal. Do you have an Ooh. analog device at I do. all of it's, any uh, kind? Oh, yeah. I went and grabbed it. I got this one. Oh, hell yeah, dude. And funny, funny enough, look what's in, look what's just coincidentally. Oh. It's, all, it's all blurry, but yeah, I like went and grabbed this off the shelf because I saw that it was on the agenda to talk about. And I was like, oh. Oh, we were supposed to mention that at the beginning of the episode. God damn right? son of a bitch. That's all right. You're running. You're running a, a a ship. You know, it's hard to hard to do that. Let's do that now. God damn it. <laughs> uh, we got new games coming to Nintendo Switch Online, specifically the Game Boy Advance consoles. You got Starfy, mm, or I'm yeah. sorry, Den Den Setsu, Den Setsu no Starfy. No. Uh, so these games only launched in Japan, and are they adapted in English now? They are not, but oh, apparently they're, they're not. much like Mother 3. There's a fan translation, I believe, for all three of these out there. Um, but they are the kind of games that you don't need the fan translation. But it does, like, that's stupid. Nintendo, don't be stubborn. Mash through dialogue. Yeah, it yeah. would have been relatively easy for them to uh, adapt these, especially if the fan translations are out there. I mean, yeah, they like, have to look, probably look the track trailers. down those people and, and get the, 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 the ROM patches, but yeah. still. Uh, so you've played this game. How is it? I, uh, so I put it in my analog pocket to go on a trip once and then, um, did not play it, but I did play oh. the, the DS one back in the day and I thought it was all right. Uh, I just, okay. it felt like Kirby, uh, but I liked the, like, I mean, looking back on the back of the box, there's all these like cute little like costumes that you can like dress up the character in, which is my, I have autofocus turned off, but, um, <laughs> But it, yeah, it, it felt like a Kirby game just with a different character is all I remember back in the day. But uh, yeah, so I think you can't go wrong with it. It has that like Nintendo polish, but um, yeah, I think there's there's probably a lot of people out here that like love Starfy to death, and I'm I'm probably making them mad right now. But I think Starfy's just Starfy's just all right. It looks very much like a Kirby game. Yeah, uh, it it's Nintendo Switch Online, so if you have the expansion pass, you can just jump right in and try it for yourself. Uh, I read somewhere people feel like uh, it's very easy to feel like you're getting drip fed uh, releases on Nintendo Switch Online. But Mm -hmm. I read somewhere they've been releasing multiple. They've been doing uh, drops more than once a month. They've been releasing like a lot of stuff. Even just a few weeks ago, we got like six new NES games or something. They weren't any good, but we did get a lot. So yeah, I, I feel like there was some cool Famicom game once again in there, like Japanese only game um, that was untranslated once again. But I can't tell you for the life of me what it what it was. I but know what I, you're talking about. I also yeah. cannot name it. Yeah. Do you remember what kind of game it was? Like, uh, I'll, was I'll forget a, about it in a, in a minute. You know, if you don't, it's fine. It was a 2D side scroller. OK, I'm currently scrolling down to see what it is. Here it is. Uh, the Mystery of Atlantis. Huh. I'm pretty sure it's this. Ah! Sorry. I love how that's just like packaged in between like two other just regular NES games. It was this one right here. Oh, wow. Right? Like classic Spelunky or something. <laughs> Another weird thing about this so is weird. that the trailer shows you the Japanese title screen and does not tell you what game it is until after oh, the title no. screen's over. <laughs> does it really? Yeah. As like a video producer, that probably like that that irks me. <laughs> and I, I bet yeah irks you too that's great uh it's just weird it's just a, a weird little detail that nintendo would do but you know what i don't care because i'd rather get the games as they were originally than not get them at all mm. because the alternative yeah. here is oh it didn't come out in america we just we don't have a translation we just won't give it to them uh which they've done in the past so i'm right i'm more than happy to just get it the way that it is yeah, I think um, especially right in the case of like Mystery of Atlantis looked very right playable without the language, unless if there is like just random bouts of dialogue where you need to, you know, choose to go left or right or, you know, I don't know, have a conversation with a person. Uh, I hope not. But um, but and Starfy seems to be the same thing where you can just play it, play it without the dialogue. But it looked like there were some cute like customization options for Starfy that you're going to have to open Google Translate or. Or uh, ask one of your friends that mildly knows a bit of Japanese. And... <laughs> it looked like uh, there was no kanji. Did I make that up? Oh, yeah. It was just all 
all hiragana and katakana. Yeah, so you could read it. <laughs> yeah, I, honestly, the back of the box. Oh, my my brain is turned to mush. There are still some <laughs> characters that I remember, but I haven't studied in so long. But yeah, I think the the back of the box is all, uh, is all like that, or is just all hiragana and katakana. So that's nice. Uh, It'd be a I'm good game to it. learn. Yeah, the dialogue uh, has no kanji, so I think we're good, baby. Let's plow nice. into this. Maybe we'll learn something. Uh, all right, let's talk about the analog pocket. What have you played on your analog pocket? I played, uh, coincidentally, I played through uh, last last year, I think. No, two years ago. I downloaded, uh, oh, no. It was a Japanese dating sim that features this girl. I can't remember her name offhand. Oh, Tokimeki Memorial. I played this. Okay. Uh, it's what is a that Japanese for? dating sim by Konami. It's, it was on Super Famicom. Oh. And somebody made an English patch for it. And th that game is like, it was worked on by the, um, uh, oh gosh, the, the guy who directed Castlevania um, Symphony of the Night. Uh, I can't remember his name, but I know people love him. He worked on Tokimeki Memorial. And K Kojima, I don't think, did. But, um, but I played through a fan translation of that, front to back. And I tried to marry this girl, or tried to, tried to date her. Her name's Shiori, Shiori Fujisaki. And uh, I failed. She's the hardest girl to try to, <laughs> to try to date. Uh, and so at the end of the game, of, there's plenty of fish in the sea. You'll be, you'll do I great out there. I could have, I could have picked something else, and I just like I went for the main character. I messed up. Uh, is that is, so? <laughs> so you got the analog pocket, and you yep. played a Super Famicom game on it. <laughs> yep, yep. Oh, and because right now they have what's it called? They have like all of the. But all the cores and stuff. Yes. Did, did yep. so? Did you use that uh, the updater tool that like runs an EXE file and just updates everything? I I think so. Yeah, and, I, and so I had like I can play what Game Gear games and like just ROMs right from the the uh, micro SD card, and so that's why I played Tokimeki Memorial. And I do have a physical copy of that game, which I won't grab for now, but but I do have one. Uh, if if so, someone cares, but how did you get your analog pocket? Did you get it? Uh... Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Did I, you get it used? I ordered. Did you get it at launch? I ordered it at launch, but then didn't like. I got into the third wave, or whatever. It's oh yeah, called. I forgot it took like a year for people to actually get theirs. <laughs> yeah. So I I got mine very very late, uh, and then just recently I bought a dock like this year and have not used it once. It's it's the, plugged in. The but... dock is pretty cool. I uh, yeah. I also got a dock and never used it. I used it for like a video and then never used it again. See, but I think it, that was my thought. Was like, it's oh, helpful capture. for like, sh yeah, exactly, for streaming games or doing game capture or something. Uh, yeah. I think I, I streamed, uh, what was it? Um, I, sh I think I streamed Super Mario Land 2 once. And oh, yeah. I, I used... Uh, that game is great. I, really, I, I played it recently for the first time. I really liked it. I used an SNES with a super game boy plugged in and that going through a frame meister going into a capture card when i could have just fucking used the analog pocket because <laughs> you can get like the super game boy color palettes i think I, on that is that right or does that sound there's a, there's a lot of great uh uh overlays and color palettes and stuff that you could do with the the analog pocket for sure yeah also, when the Analog Pocket came out, it was like the only game in town that did all of this stuff. Now there's like a million yeah. devices that do similar things. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, like you must be so overwhelmed in that regard. Like people in your in, in your email, just like, hey, can you can you show this off? This one, this one, please. I just don't even do? look at my email anymore. <laughs> I, I uh, right. honestly, I, there's just a lot on Twitter. People getting really excited about all of the, these things that uh, are similar to the Analog Pocket, but a little different. Um, mm -hmm. So if you were one of the people that didn't get an analog pocket and you were very interested in getting your hands on one, don't worry, because there's finally one that's available that, oh my gosh. that is out that you can go on their website and purchase right now. It's in limited quantities, but it's been two days and it's still available. This is the aluminum analog pocket. Ooh, and it is 500 goddamn dollars. I think it's beautiful, but... How do you, how do you, what do you think of that price tag? What does that, what does that do to your insides? So <laughs> it makes sense to me. I, th this comes at a great time because I just did a, 
aluminum shell mod for my analog pocket. Um, there's oh, really? A, yeah. So about like two weeks ago, I posted a video uh, where uh, I bought a, an aluminum shell that somebody that some people make. I think it was Retro CN is the website that makes it. Uh, it was two hundred dollars for the shell because aluminum shells cost a lot of money because they have to okay. build them and stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. And I have a lot of aluminum stuff. I have the I have an aluminum uh, Game Boy Advance and aluminum DS. Those Boxy Pixel makes that stuff. They're usually pretty expensive. They're usually a hundred or two hundred dollars just for the shell. Uh, so I understand that this is five hundred dollars. So the analog pocket itself cost two hundred and twenty dollars. Then I paid an additional two hundred dollars for the shell. If you're counting at home, that's four hundred and twenty dollars. This is five hundred dollars. So this is even more than the mod that you could do yourself. So I guess I mean you don't have to do the labor. So that and this is an official mm, yeah. analog product. So I get it. The price is not that outrageous. The thing that stings is that you just can't get a regular analog pocket. You haven't yeah. been able to go to their website and purchase. This is the normal one, the original one, the black and white, still sold out. But if you're willing to spend so all of this money, you can get an aluminum one. That is outrageous. That seems like they're really... Their manufacturing process is fucked. They're, they're manufacturing the limited qualities that they have here. Yeah, yeah. It's not like a... I mean, they call their... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, too, but they, they call their systems like limited editions or special editions or something like that almost, don't they? Or they're, they're, they're color variants? So that's another thing that I take issue with with Analog is uh, they have the black and white, but they haven't been in stock forever. And instead of stocking the black and white versions, they're releasing limited edition ones. That usually... I think they cost like a little more sometimes. Um they first oh, yeah, started with the glow right. in the I did notice that. Yeah. They they started with the glow in the dark one and then they did ones that looked like uh they did clear ones, they did ones that uh here we go. So yeah, it started with glow in the dark, oh, which is pretty so cool. Cool. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Uh then they did transparent ones, which is are great because this is also similar to a Game Boy. Uh then yeah. they did uh like the Play It Loud series, which <laughs> oh, is more like point. a Game Boy. Yeah. Uh and now they're on aluminum. But all of these were limited edition. Every single one of them was limited. I don't know why, instead of doing limited, they didn't just sell the black and white one again. Yeah. P people just want a regular old analog pocket, and they're not able to get it. They have to spend Ima uh, 2.5 times the price. Nintendo has come close. <laughs> to, to, to That's a good that. point. That's true. Um, or Sony. You know, some, it's hard to get a PlayStation 5, but uh, you can get bundles and stuff, you know? Yeah. Other yeah. people do some similar <laughs> shit to this. Um, but never this egregious. This is, like, very blatant. Like, we want yeah. a lot of money yeah. or you're not getting this at all. It's almost like just buying it from a reseller. Yeah, yeah. When, and it's, God, imagine if the marketing department for Analog was like, hey, you know, what Analog's, it's been out for, like, two, three years, something like that, right? Like, what if in the marketing trailer we, we talk about, like, how people have been busting up their systems because they've they've been playing them into the ground, but now there's the aluminum one, which won't break. <laughs> and that's what it is. That's why you should buy it. Yeah, that's the selling point. It's like the DS, the, like DS Lite, how the hinges would always crack um, on them. <laughs> or I think even the original DS had that issue too. But what every DS's hinges are probably awful. But yeah, this just feels so. I don't know. I I know a lot of people out there that still have held off on buying the analog pocket because they wanted a cheaper version or um or yeah because it was just flat out sold out and I when you when you explained the like kind of effort that goes into this, you know, of making making the aluminum shells and all that, I I feel a little bit better about it, but still just so much money. Ah. No, it, it the problem isn't the problem I have with it isn't the price point of the aluminum versions it's with the fact that they just aren't producing oh, regular sure. ones they're doing crazy shit like this instead of just you know fulfilling demand yeah, um yeah so it's uh it's weird it's weird also uh analog like the analog pocket's really cool but again there's a million things now that do what the analog pocket does so it's not as cool as it once was like a couple years ago when it first came out
uh you can get i do really like mine but but yeah i've not really played with any of like the other tech that you show off on the channel for the most part yeah i i love mine i I never touch it because i have all these (laughs) other things that could do the same thing Uh, there's the uh, FPGBC, which is uh, the funny playing uh, FPGA uh, Game Boy Color that is pretty similar, and it's eighty dollars. <laughs> so, ow, it's an FPGA Game Boy Color. It can't play Game Boy Advance games, but still, it's only like eighty dollars. So, can't really go wrong. Yeah, that's with that. great. All right, uh, what else do we got here? Let's move on to this one. I don't know anything about this. Uh, Report. Oh, this is from Kotaku. Uh, This says... uh, Oh, way to credit credit the source. Yes. Unlike this this article. I thought it was... uh... Oh, it doesn't credit? Oh, or rather, no, 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 so sorry. Not, not, thank you for catching me. Not the article, but the, the topic... The topic of the uh, of the article is about oh, not, I understand. Crediting, not crediting people. So look at you. R- report. Nintendo isn't crediting everyone who worked on its biggest games. Uh, I'm. This isn't a surprise. They've been very bad at uh, uh, crediting their developers. Uh, a new report claims that Nintendo doesn't allow external contractors who help translate some of their biggest games to be named and listed in games credits. The company behind Super Mario even reportedly forces these translators to sometimes sign 10-year NDAs, making it nearly impossible for them to talk about their work or put it on their CV or resume. In a new July 12th report for GameDeveloper.com, multiple sources have helped uh, local... Multiple sources who have helped localize big Nintendo games claim that they and their colleagues weren't named in the credits for titles like The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom or Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. These uncredited translators work for months on Nintendo games. However, according to one source, Nintendo's policy is to not individually credit these workers. Instead, only in-house Nintendo-employed translators make the cut. So do they just credit the company probably not i guess i i've heard things about like yeah if you work for a big company that like i don't know if you've seen but uh as an example i think near automata uh had it was developed by platinum games and square enix collab like they collaborated on that game but then there were a bunch of other like tiny studios that like assisted with maybe sound design or you know fixed up they tightened up the graphics in this section or something you know and so, yeah, I wonder if or I rather I've heard that when those people get credited on games, sometimes it's just it's not actually for what they did. But, yeah, it'll be the studio that gets credited or. um, And then the person will just work for that team. And so they'll never. Yeah, they'll never get the recognition that like that they first right deserve um, or uh, or. Yeah, yeah, they it, that's just it. They They deserve to be to be on the on the bill. I take issue with how nintendo handles awards i've talked about this before where like the game awards uh whenever nintendo wins something uh it's not the developers that accept the award it's fucking doug bowser (laughs) it's like you didn't work on the game dude you just did the pr for it you know like uh that happens uh a lot it happened with uh metroid dread also it won an award and the people who worked on it didn't get to accept it or or even go to the event um so Nintendo has a weird history of giving their developers credit for doing such a good job on their games. And I understand a little bit because Nintendo is very hands-on with uh, their games. Uh, the, the higher-ups uh, do have their hands in everything, but still, it's like these people who did all of the work uh, aren't getting to... They're not getting the praise that they deserve because Nintendo isn't allowing them to receive the credit that they deserve. Right. Yeah. And like, I mean, I think from some, there is some bit of uh, not, not like a ledge you can stand on or a standpoint, but like, it's definitely easier probably to have Doug Bowser go and accept the the award. Cause he's, he's trained to, you know, speak on camera. I think, uh, sometimes it doesn't really look like it, but, um, but that's, that's beside <laughs> the point. I don't, I don't mean to dig into you, Doug. Uh, but, um, but it, that it really defeats a lot of the purpose of the award, doesn't it? Cause I mean, I know it's, you know, having the director out there to accept the award or the lead producer or the art director or something like that, like still would be accepting it on behalf of the team. Um, but 
yeah, it is it is really lame that they don't that they don't do even at least that because you get some incredible speeches and Nintendo. Doug's always just like, "Yep, Metroid sold a lot this year, <laughs> exceeded our expectations. Thank you all for playing it." I gotta go. I gotta get back to playing Animal Crossing on my Nintendo Switch, and uh, and then that's it. So they should at least like name the people that worked on it. You know, like I I do understand what you mean though. They pro- are probably really conscious of PR trained people. Like they want they don't want you to go up there and say anything that they don't <laughs> sure. necessarily approve of. But then just approve their speech. Then you know, like uh, let yeah. them at least go to the award show. Yeah, they they've got the. Nintendo has the budget, right? They've got the the payroll to be able to support like flying a dev out and putting him up in a hotel for a couple of days or whatever and like and then yeah. And I think last year at the Game Awards, they did have AJ Onuma out and Yeah, but he's like one of the top else? guys, you know? Yeah. Like that's that's not surprising. But when Super Mario Odyssey wins an award, that that director's not fucking, you know, accepting anything. Yeah. It it is weird, you're right. It's weird how they pick and choose. In yeah. that regard, it's because AG Hour Numa is like a, like a rock star. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He loves it. Uh, next, uh, this is this was written. Will wrote this down saying Microsoft is selling a no console required bundle. Uh, but the hmm. article says Amazon now selling Fire Sticks, Xbox controller, and the Game Pass Ultimate bundle. So this is a Fire Stick, Xbox uh, edition, I guess, bundle. And it's like, uh, I don't know what a Fire Stick costs, but I look at that and I'm like, wait, I can play Xbox games on my TV for that? That's that's how that's how cheap it is? It's like $80 right now? Does this say the price? Uh, right above, if you go back up, right where it says Amazon on the kind of right-hand side there. Um, move your mouse to the right just a little bit. Go back down. It's below the... Oh, yeah. there it is. <laughs> there it is. I thought that was an um, ad. Oh, I mean, I think it, there probably are, um, what do you call it? Um... Uh, I don't know what the thing, what's the term? It's on a get. Prime Day deal. Oh, is it? Yeah. It's and on it a does Prime have Day deal. Like, it's got the Microsoft kind of like branding to it. Like the font looks very similar and like the placement of like all of that. Like it, I see that and I go, oh yeah, Microsoft made that marketing piece, but maybe they didn't. Maybe it is just an Amazon, an Amazon. Um, well, no, no, this is a, uh, this this font this this page right here is definitely a microsoft situation you're right you're right about that i i just the uh it is just the bundle itself is on a prime day deal uh it Mm, was 120 dollars. it is now around 80 dollars, which is not bad because you get the fire stick and a controller costs like 40 bucks that's the whole reason they were having such an issue making that maybe even too like uh, brand new yeah, I think I think MSRP is probably fifty, but you could probably get one for like forty bucks. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, right, that right. was going to walk into any any store, right? <laughs> they were trying to make the Xbox streaming device, and uh, they couldn't right. do it because it has to come with a controller, and the controller costs money. Uh, yeah, it was too expensive. Otherwise, right? Was that was that yeah. the thing that Phil Spencer said, or some something like that? Yep. So this is kind of the alternative to that. I'm sure that this yeah. Fire Stick is not going to be as you know nice as a microsoft device would have been it's probably going to have a little more latency or whatever but yeah if you need a fire stick and you would love a controller uh this doesn't seem like that bad of a deal i do Do wish that microsoft made their own thing though yeah do you think you'll be playing like psychonauts 2 and then like an advertisement will just pop up like 30 minutes in do you think is that that is that a thing is that a i don't think so i just uh just i i thought i remember hearing that like amazon fire sticks had free stuff but had ads or something like this was way back in the day when Fire Six were first new or whatever. But is that Roku? One oh. of them was trying to do just ads that popped up in the middle of whatever you were watching. That would be really bad if I'm playing a game and a fucking ad comes up. That would ruin my experience. Like you just you just finish a cutscene and then there's and then there's an ad and you're like, wait, what? Yeah, if that or... happened to me while I'm playing a game, uh, I would never use that device to play a game again. I would like a big. St- a big symbol just appears on the screen and it, like it starts it starts counting down to warn you yeah, of like, or, or it makes the game, your game smaller like on Twitch it makes the game smaller and then like a sidebar comes up i would oh no I would turn the game you, off and play it on something else <laughs> you could still see it oh that's yeah. mi- that's miserable miserable or like thought. or it like slowly mutes the game and the ad starts playing that would be the fucking end for me 
<laughs> your characters just start, like start talking about like <laughs> i guess they did that in final fantasy 15 like man i could really use some more top ramen or whatever or, or cup oh, cup cup noodle i think it was I think but, they do that in NBA also, the like campaigns for those games. They just oh, really? they just fucking yeah. straight up play ads. Uh Man, whatever. I'm so glad I had a Gatorade after that game. But that's like part of the game. Like you're you're kind of forced into it. This is like you're playing a game and then all of a sudden you're removed out of the game because right. you have to watch a fire stick ad or something. And this con this concept we're talking about is not real, right? No. Like it's well, okay. it's something <laughs> that was like tested for for one of these streaming boxes the do you think this um do you think if you buy this package do you think it comes in like a cool box or do you think it's just like one piece of like air like an airbag and then like <laughs> all the devices are just like thrown in and there's like uh, a it, and it's a brown cardboard or box or maybe yes. a bubble mailer I think there's no fancy box. I think it's exactly what you're saying. They just throw it all in because it's Amazon. What do they care? Yeah, you know. Yeah, you're, you're, you're the package. Like if you put it in a store, the package has to look nice. But if you're yeah. buying it online, you just need a cool picture, and then I want to order one there. of these just to like see what what it looks like. You know, <laughs> Amazon has a pretty good return policy. Uh, okay. Holy Lettuce yeah. in the chat says, so in my experience with Fire TV, Xbox streaming, there is extreme delay even with 500 megabits per second uh, internet speeds, I guess. Uh, also, mine has wow. an issue where the whole screen goes green and you can only see the outline of the game. It's pretty bad. Um, that sounds like an Xbox thing. That sounds like an HDR issue. Mm, or it no, could just right. be terrible streaming. Uh that's why I'd like to see a Microsoft version of a device like this, because the Fire Stick is not built for games. And unfortunately, you need a low latency controller input, uh, which is in this case, Bluetooth, which is, you know, the Xbox controller has like its own proprietary wireless mm. signal that makes it uh, less latent. Yeah. Uh, and, also, and there's no like USB input either, right? On a Fire Stick? I no, imagine. it's just it's just a stick. OK, that's it. So on top of that, you need a really fast connection to whatever server is streaming the, the video. Uh, and you don't normally need that when you're just watching a video. It doesn't need to be low latency. It just needs to get the video to you eventually. Um, oh, yeah, true. You're right. It can so, drop. It can drop in quality a little bit if it needs or something. And it's I mean, you might wince a little or just slow it down. Like the buffering could happen before you start watching the video, you know? Mm, interesting. Uh, when the, uh, when Google did Stadia, when Stadia was a thing, uh, you could only play it on the Chromecast, like ultra, uh, because that had the lowest latency and it was like the oh, highest resolution uh -huh. and, and stuff. Uh, it didn't even work on the other versions of the Chromecast. Uh, because it needed all of that stuff. Also, the way that they got around the latency with the controller was the controller just connected to your Wi-Fi. So the controller didn't even connect to the Chromecast. It just went straight to your router. So it goes right to the server. It doesn't even need to connect to the device first. Crazy. Yeah. I actually really liked Stadia for what it was. It got I shit on. Yeah. But I was like, this technology is actually the best that I've seen so far. Uh, people just weren't ready for streaming yeah. games at the at the time period also yeah they marketed it like you can play games at 4k 60 frames per second and nothing ran like that so they kind of uh -huh. botched it in that way uh but for the most part i thought stadia was pretty cool now we got the playstation portal and oh yeah and fire sticks you, you, that you don't like that thing right oh i do not like the playstation portal no sir it is not very good I've still never. Yeah, I have think you, I did, did hold one once. Ha, have you dabbled with PlayStation streaming at all, or PlayStation no. Remote Play? I, I did use Xbox streaming to play Persona Three on a backbone on my phone, mm -hmm. and that was fine enough, just because it was a turn-based RPG. But not with PlayStation stuff yet. Uh, Xboxes works a little better. Oh it's yeah, crazy because they don't have a handheld. <laughs> yeah. Um. I'm glad that this um that this like package, this Amazon Fire Stick package, isn't being sold at retail. 
like that we know of yet because imagine if like you and i were still working at gamestop back in the day and like a bunch of moms and just just people came in to buy this for their family and kids and like and it just didn't work i feel like i feel like it would be getting returned a lot and i i might maybe i'm wrong on that, i but... would probably never tell someone to get it <laughs> i would yeah. probably just avoid it altogether when they're talking, could oh, you imagine? Wait, can they play their Call emails? of Duty on this? I'd be like, yeah, nah, don't even. You're gonna be right back here. They say week. you can with Game Pass, but you should. Yeah, you're right. You shouldn't. And I suppose corporate probably wouldn't ever send out an email saying like, "Hey, how are those how are those Fire Stick sales going? You know, we need to push more of those because they're not. Oh, selling, I got in trouble spending. all the time. I never. I had a great manager who would take all the heat like for us nice. so like we would, would they never give you pre-orders too you know like like oh hey you 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 hop on this transaction you do this one you know oh i no they were just cool with me oh not they were getting just cool. a lot of pre-orders <laughs> awesome that's great uh we got enough to like coast by you know but uh yeah. whenever we had like dumb like promotions we had to like throw at people uh my manager would just be like no i'm not doing that <laughs> do you remember and... anyone specific just just out of out of sheer self-indulgent curiosity so i was i worked at gamestop uh in like the xbox 360 generation okay. so um at the time the big deal was uh we needed to get pre-orders uh we needed to sell the magazine with with the power-up card mm -hmm. and we needed uh, uh they just started doing the warranties on the discs i forgot what they were called Oh, is it right? GPGs? or Maybe so, they weren't called that then, but... That sounds familiar. Um, so what I did was I just... Uh, so at the time, the Xbox 360 w would eat discs sometimes. So right. people would come in all the time. Hey, my Call of Duty's scratched. I would... I got mad and kicked my Xbox and look at it now. So when a mom would come in and buy the newest Madden or Call of Duty, I would say, hey... Uh, we have a warranty. It's three dollars. If you think you might scratch the disc ever, you get a new game immediately. And they'd be like, "Oh yeah, I want that." My kid sucks. He yeah. always hits the Xbox and breaks these things. So <laughs> that was like just automatic because it makes sense for them. But absolutely, other I agree. people that worked at GameStop would just put it on. They would just add it to Ooh, people's dude. carts, you know, without saying uh -huh. anything because the corporate like culture was so shitty. They they yeah, like no kind toxic. of expected you to just force these sales on people. Yeah, yeah, right. Because oh. if you if you didn't do that, then you like weren't doing your job. Is how it felt. I yeah, think. I just at least for me at least, right? I was again. My manager was cool, so if if uh, they were fine with me, just Good. only doing it when it made sense. You know, I wasn't gonna like force it on people. If, they, if yeah, my manager wasn't trying to be like the one with like the most magazine sales. <laughs> You yeah, know? the leading the leading pur power 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 up rewards. Yeah, we, store we in the district. Also, our, our nobody was coming into our store. We were every oh, is it a slow store? Yeah, every mall around here on Long Island had two Game Stops in it, and then also one right outside the mall. And we were one of the ones that was outside of a mall that already had two Game Stops in it. Oh, <laughs> so no. there was zero reason for anybody to ever yeah. come to our Game Stop. Uh, and they didn't. So we just kind of hung out and ate Taco Bell all the time. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was I great. used to work at one that was in a mall. And then one opened up outside of the mall, uh, like way, way, really far away. And um, well, like still in the city. But then everybody started like converting their pre-orders over to that store because it wasn't in the mall. They didn't have to go pay for parking. They didn't have to go do uh... any of that. And it was like, oh, this this sucks. This, this that, is great. I, that I happened to me. I did start in a mall. And then uh, the assistant manager went and started her own store. And I was like, they're like, oh, yeah, she wants you to go join her, but you don't have to go there. And I was like, oh, where's the store? And it happened to be uh, the closest one to my house. And I was like, please, I want to oh, go to that store. Please. Uh -huh, I don't want to yeah. be here anymore. So I moved to that. And it was, like, people. it was like I retired. It was awesome. Well done. I wonder hey, if anyone uh, in the chat has. Oh, has anyone in the chat uh, worked at GameStop before? Uh, people in the chat. Uh, have rated us. It's Wood. Whoa! Wood streaming and he rated us. Oh, that's Hi, so Wood. nice. How you doing? How's everybody doing? Welcome, were you talking? Everybody. Were you playing a game? What were you doing? What were you all getting up he to? Was just bullshitting is what I'm going to guess. I haven't heard uh, of that game before. <laughs> uh, more news. We'll jump into uh, 
we're almost done ro rolling through this news. Uh, this one I haven't heard yet. The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. That's the new Zelda game where Zelda's actually, you're actually playing Zelda. Uh, uh, the yes. age rating says you can play as Link as well as Zelda. God, a companies bunch of must theories. love the ESRB. <laughs> <laughs> Just leaking everything. Yeah, yeah. They're like, sorry, it's our job. Here's the Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom rating summary still live at the time of the article's publication in full. This is per IGN. Uh, this is an adventure game in which players assume the role of Zelda as she attempts to dispel rifts through Hyrule and rescue Link. From a three-fourth overhead <laughs> perspective, okay, thank you, players I've explore various environments. That. I've never heard that either. Uh, while fighting stylized enemies, uh, humans, creatures, etc. As Link... Players use a sword and arrows to defeat enemies. Zelda can use a magic wand to summon creatures uh, for battle. Some enemies can be defeated by being set on fire. Other Whoa. creatures oh. dissolve into mist when defeated. Battle sequences are somewhat frenetic with several enemies attacking slash fighting at once. So that's really strange. That. Yeah. I... Because when you see the trailer, it seems like it's just a Zelda game. You're playing as yeah. Zelda. Uh, reading this, it sounds like you can choose. Yeah, I wonder if it'll... Like, this just popped in my head as as you were reading it. Because um, I've not really thought about this article much either, or this, this bit of news. But maybe it's just a thing where you play as Link for the first, like, a couple minutes of the game or something. And you fight, you fight Ganondorf. And then in the trailer, they show that, yeah, Link fights to Ganon wins but then like falls into a pit or something like that and then just kind of like tears of the kingdom and then zelda's like all right okay sign me up um but so but maybe why would just, they why would they put both in the description you know why, why yeah. would they spell it out like like you play like a metroid game and in the beginning of the game you're samus and you got all the abilities so they could yeah. show you all the abilities oh this is what you could have at the end of the game uh and then you lose all of your abilities and you get them eventually. Uh, yeah. This, you're saying that maybe in the beginning of the game you play as Link. Uh, but maybe. then if the whole rest of the game doesn't have Link in it, then that wouldn't really make much sense. Yeah. Why they would I, put I, this in the description. I'd be curious to see what other, um, and, and maybe you'd like agree with this too, but I'd be curious to see what other kinds of descriptions uh, the ESRB actually puts out. Because I've never read any before. I've only like, you know, just looked at like the back of the box and then like read mild cartoon violence or like see website for more info or something, you know, and then never gone to the website to go look. Um, and so I wonder, you know, like in, I don't know if Famicom detective club, when that comes out, if the ESRB for that will, will, you know, get into like all of the scary specifics of things just to kind of like warn parents and warn players that are, you know, cautious. Um, That's a good I don't point. Know. I don't know how accurate their descriptions are. I don't know who writes yeah. these descriptions. This sounds like an yeah. official description, uh, yeah. but you're yeah, right. It it's great. only from the ESRB. So what are they basing that off of? Maybe they, I mean, the ESRB has to play the game before they make their little rating. Uh, yeah. So maybe they played it and they're taking uh, like a small little section where you play as Link and like making a big deal out of it even. So you're right. Maybe that's yeah. what it is. I was reading this as if it is Nintendo saying it because sure. it does sound pretty I think official. When, you, when I first was looking at this like earlier in the day, I think that's and even when I heard about this like earlier in the week or last week, I think that's where I was at. It just it just popped in my head like, oh, wait, oh, be the optimist. Maybe it's not the whole game. Because, <laughs> um, I mean, I would like to play as Link a lot in the game if they let me, but I also want to play as zelda too yeah so. i kind of just want to play zelda like i want the, yeah. i want it to be different like i'm not interested in playing as link at all we already had that game yeah. a million times <laughs> I, I want like a fun new thing where i get to summon monsters and stuff that sounds yeah. really cool uh maybe people are mentioning maybe it's like a new game plus type thing and that'd be pretty cool if you just unlock mm, okay. link to play like afterwards uh maybe yeah. it's like he, he just gets the wand or something or Maybe it's like Resident Evil 2, where uh, you play as one character, and then you play it again as the other character. Oh, dude, you know, that would make... I didn't consider that either, but, like, yeah, maybe there's a, the light world and the dark world, and Link, Link's in the dark world, and Zelda's in the oh. light world, or something like that, and it, it splits in that way. Because, I mean, most, most like, uh, A Link to the Past-style games have always had that, that um, not contrast, but that, uh, that, that separation, um, and maybe that's how they're going to do it this time. 
Uh, that's but right, point. but right now it does look like it's just like all the marketing materials, right? Like they just show us just Zelda. So, but uh, also I'm reading it now as Link. Players use a sword and arrow to defeat enemies. Zelda can use a magic wand. It could just be them being like, usually you play as Link and he does this, but now uh, you're playing uh -huh. as Zelda and she's completely different. You know, it could be that. <laughs> oh yeah, as Link. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. I like how it's just use a sword and arrows. Like no and I maybe I think that's the That's line what I mean. That, yeah, that, that's like yeah. very minimal. That that makes right. it sound like you're not doing too much as Link. Yeah, and I think that's the line that actually like tripped that trigger in my head was like, oh, yeah, like where's I mean his shield doesn't have to be in there, but where are bombs and where where are his magic items and yeah. But, or or but, it yeah. could be like what you it could now I'm going back on it. Maybe it could be like you said, you play as him in the beginning for like two seconds because it is a link to the past and then they just, you know, uh it turns into this game. So it could be the yeah. beginning like a little bait and switch. Anyway, uh It has me excited though. I, I, I think I wasn't really thinking of the potential of Link until now, and so that's good job, ESRB, I guess, <laughs> or something. I don't know. Uh, we got two more stories that we'll plow through right now. Ooh, ooh. Rockstar is a GTA Plus subscription service. Could be coming to Nintendo Switch. I had to look up what the GTA Plus subscription service even yeah. is. I've been waiting for this for so... No, I'm just kidding. I Yeah, I also... <laughs> I had no idea it was a thing either. Was like, I was like, is this a... Is this like a... Like, if I go to the gas station, do I buy like a Rockstar like, or a GTA thing for like... Is, it, is that how I buy money in Grand Theft Auto <laughs> Online? Like, I don't... So apparently know. GTA Plus, uh, they say it in the second line of this article, uh, oh, launched in March 2022, the service uh, gives members access to, quote, a rotating assortment of Rockstar Ooh. titles, while Grand Theft Auto Online players receive extra cash, cars, cosmetic, and exclusive items. So it's like their version of Game Pass, or it's Rockstar's version of like Ubisoft Plus, or whatever the fuck it's called. Um, yeah, yeah. It's weird so, they rotate games instead of just like throwing them all in there, but but that's yeah because it it's Rockstar. How many do you, do you have? <laughs> right, yeah, like no table tennis in there, no no bully. Table tennis needs to be a all of the time thing. You know, you can't just pop that in and out every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Can you ima imagine the fanfare for that when it drops. So I guess Nintendo Switch wasn't supported because there's not many Rockstar games on Nintendo Switch, but they've accumulated some. There's a uh, the right here it says the grand theft auto trilogy uh red dead redemption is now on switch uh, la noir is on switch so there are some switch games so yeah i don't know exactly how that would work uh on the switch like how would you even oh, be right. able to redeem your switch games yeah that's a good point because even if they had like a rockstar app you would then have to download the like the games yeah. and then yeah you're right like that that is that is very odd i don't even know how it works on xbox or playstation either have you used any of the like the ubisoft app or like is there an ea app on xbox or anything like that no i think ubisoft has a deal with game no it's ea had a deal with game pass um, okay that's as far as i know I, I haven't tried any of this stuff on consoles uh th this tweet here is the catalyst for this whole thing it says rockstar games has updated the platform list for games included with gta plus to include nintendo switch but it is not currently used on the site rockstar may soon update the games on the switch to be playable for free with a gta plus subscription i'm gonna go ahead and say if that's all that we're going off of i'm gonna go ahead and say that uh it's probably just a mistake <laughs> it's probably probably just copied and pasted what platforms these games are for yeah instead of saying what you can play them on with your gta plus subscription that's what i'm gonna that's gonna be my bet well when you're on the website uh like on the the gta or rockstargames.com you know link and everything um they show la noir red dead redemption the gta trilogy and it shows the xbox and playstation logos and then for like some of the other games, like the PSP ones and DS, they've got App Store and Google Play. Um, but there's a lot of space. Like, as I mean, I'm not a graphic designer, but as somebody who dabbles in graphic design a lot, <laughs> um, that my brain does go like, what are you putting there? Why is that, <laughs> why is that there? Um, and maybe it is just a preference. Like, they decided to, like, left justify the, the logos um, on the website. Because there is no Switch on there right now, on, on at least the link I'm looking at. Um, 
But it, it does. You 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 raise some good questions though about like. Oh, is that what this ow. is? Wait. Rockstar has updated the platform list to include Nintendo Switch games. Wait. So the website doesn't currently. I'm very confused. Did so this guy just put and... the Nintendo Switch logo on there because this is modified? Was it just empty and he just put the Nintendo Switch logo because he thought it made more sense? Maybe. But what? Uh, what? Well, maybe, maybe he, maybe this person read this, or maybe it was like, right? Maybe they created the images, but mm -hmm. maybe they, maybe somewhere else it says Nintendo Switch on the website or something like that. Because that's a good point. The Switch logos actually kind of look a little crap, but um, he, he, this article says it's seemingly been updated to include Nintendo Switch. Seemingly, I love that. So was it or wasn't it, dude? Like Jordan Midler wrote this. I like Jordan a lot. Jordan's great. Good guy. <laughs> good guy let's ask him say what the yeah. fuck is this is this even about? Yeah. did anything even happen is there any reason we should be talking about this it's only it's only 2 a.m for jordan right now in the uk so oh shit oh you have a little uk clock so yeah. you know when, yeah. when you yeah. need to be it's clocked a, in the work it's nintendo too <laughs> oh shit yeah it just helps That's... me like you know kind of like i can look at that and be like oh i shouldn't dm my coworkers right now because they're having dinner or something <laughs> you know but uh, last bit of news that we will uh, go through is uh, League of Legends maker canceled a Smash Brothers style fighting game because of what happened to multiverses. So wait, this is different than the other game that they're making? They're making a fighting game. Yeah, I think I think you're right. They're making like a uh, I don't. What do you call a Street Fighter like game? I don't know. A fighting game. Fighting I game. I don't know. Uh, it looks yeah, really I good. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for that game. Uh, as long mm. as they put a Valorant character in it, because I don't care about any of the other games. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Riot Games has been trying to turn the popularity of League of Legends into an extended universe of multi-genre games for years now. That plan apparently included prototyping a Smash Brothers-style game starring League of Legends characters called Party Pool. Pool Party. Pool Party. <laughs> Hey, uh, I don't like that name. I'll, t I'll tell you that's that. a terrible name, and uh, this does sound different from the fighting game that they're working on. And I'm glad that this got canceled. Uh, but according to a new report, the project was recently canned due to due in part to the uphill road faced by multiverses. According to a new report by the Washington Post, a uh, launcher editor. I'm not even going to attempt that name. On his Patreon, Pool Party was pitched as a Smash Brothers-esque game set in the League of Legends universe that would invest uh, heavily in a competitive esports scene. Once in development, the project took on party game elements and casual, friendly mechanics, but Riot Games ultimately decided to walk away in part because of the perceived failure of Multiverses, a Warner Brothers crossover fighter that made a passive splash in 2022 but then went offline for months before relaunching to much less fanfare around 80 people were apparently working on pool party <laughs> up until its cancellation in may may just this may that does hurt for them now but some God, have God. been reassigned while others were laid off. We all oh, quote, whoa. we always have a number of projects at various phases and R&D and spinning projects up and down happens multiple times a year. A uh, spokesperson told them Riot Games is still working on a 2v2 League of Legends fighting game planned for release called 2XKO. That's the game that I'm excited for. And it also has an MMO based in the universe in development since the MOBA blew up, blah, 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 blah. Uh, that's crazy. I, wh first of all, why yeah. would they even be working on a game like this if they're already making a fighting game? Yeah, it is. It is weird. They have, they, I don't know if you've noticed, but they, they put out a lot of like weird uh, things just trying to like expand the, the League of Legends brand, I suppose. Like the Switch has... I don't know, five different like spin-off League of Legends games, if I remember right. Um and I've not played a single one, but they always like they look they've got the League of Legends money and, and care put into them. But um but this does feel I agree, this feels like a weird thing to tackle while also having a a a, a pretty like exciting fighting game coming out. Yeah. Uh I think that the failure of the Nintendo uh the, the Nickelodeon Smash Brothers clone, I think mm. uh is that was a little worse than what happened with multiverses i heard that multiverses the, the warner brothers game that they're referring to uh was actually pretty decent but the failure yeah. there i think was that 
it launched in like pre-alpha and then and it required you to buy it and then oh really they, i didn't realize I'm that i'm pretty sure it required you to buy it am i wrong okay. about that chat somebody uh refresh I, my memory I, I remember characters you had to buy characters or you had to like win them with in-game money or whatever oh uh, was it then but maybe it was free to play i think so well it was a pre-alpha it came out maybe I, you know what i think it was get the game today if you pay for it if not you gotta wait a week and then oh, you, sure. it'll be free to play uh launched then had no updates uh no it went offline it it it, had, it was pre-alpha in like 2022 and then it went offline for like a really long time it was free but you had to buy some characters okay um yeah it went offline and then it relaunched again which is a very bizarre way to to yeah. handle that situation so that's why i think it came out like a wet fart because there's nobody really there was no reason to be excited about it it already came out yeah <laughs> Yeah, they put out those a couple like I don't even know if the characters are out, but Jason Voorhees from the everyone's favorite slasher film, and then the everyone's favorite other horror movie character, uh, the guy from The Matrix that's not Neo, Mister, I don't know, the guy that Agent wears Smith. Oh, yeah, I was like, wait, they the guy that wears sunglasses, but they all wear sunglasses. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, Agent Smith. Um, yeah, they put put those two, or they they released that trailer, um, and like I remember just thinking like. I don't I don't care about multiverses, but like I, I, I definitely don't care about this. Uh, and maybe other people <laughs> out there like were excited about it, but um but for for the game coming back, I suppose, for them to have like, you know, shut it down and bring it back and then only have those two characters to kind of like show off or like relaunch the game with. Um yeah, that that feels like a misstep. Uh, Davey in the chat says multiverse is struggle because it was a live service, which requires a lot of consistent players to be considered a success. Well, it was a live service that went offline <laughs> for like a long time. That's so. a good point. I bet like competitive, like fighting game players, they might've just like moved on. Do you think? So like that and the, the Nicktoons brawl game or whatever, uh, those games, hit like the smash brothers like scene all the smash brothers like players and stuff played those games because they're just starving for new stuff you know like uh yeah it's not like there's much smash brothers content going on right now so uh they were kind of excited to jump into something else like a new game that does the stuff that they're used to but uh they're just nothing's ever going to be as good as smash brothers there's so much that goes into making uh smash brothers that yeah, it's just so hard to for anybody else to even come close. And these companies that made these games kind of learned that. I'm glad at least like multiverses. No, I I will never know. You know how much money? Well, maybe they will. Maybe we will. But I let. I'm I'm thinking for now we'll never know how much money they sunk into that project. But uh, but maybe because they own, or at least like work with most of the IP, maybe it wasn't so bad. But um, but I've always been curious like what. Does Nintendo have to pay, you know, like Disney and Square Enix to use Sora in Kingdom Hearts? There's definitely Cloud. like weird deals that are going on because it's promotion for those guys. But yeah, so they probably have to pay something. But yeah, also Sakurai's a psychopath and he's like, uh, you know, like put, putting he's like working, you know, 24 hours a day on these things and, and like uh, uh, going through every little detail. Whereas these, you know, Warner Brothers games doesn't really give that much of a shit, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. That's all of the news. Now, oh my God, do I not have a tweet yes. of the week? Where's the tweet of the week song? Oh, I see one on my end. I won't no, say you, what it is. No, you fucking... I think I, I have do. A, I'm supposed to have a button. And you hit it and it goes, tweet of the week, tweet of the week. Tweet oh, of the really? Week. Yeah. I don't know what if, what if I, I just... Went. Tweet of the week! Ah, there, there, there you go <laughs> that's your tweet of the week uh <laughs> this is not the tweet of the week uh it's conan o'brien and it says having paul mccartney on carpool karaoke enjoying things in hindsight and the thrill of broadway listen to the podcast episode with james corden this is not the tweet of the week the tweet of the week is all of the replies just okay. dumping on him Say it because everyone loves Conan's podcast, but everyone's like, nah, I'm good. I'm gonna, I'm not watching this one. This one's like every single reply Whoa. is, nah, oh I'm good, gosh. dude. Hey, this is the first time I only listened to the ad in the podcast. <laughs> 
Nope, hard pass. First one I've ever skipped. Man, I don't know why people don't like him, um, but I'm. That's fine. Suppose there's been some stories that he was like a jerk to like wait staff or other people like in the industry, and so he just seems to be like mm. a very rude guy, and that's why people don't like him. Okay. I just thought that was an interesting uh, no. Twitter, that's Twitter wild moment. to see. <laughs> Yeah, like to see the difference, right? And the like the like to dislike ratio, but with comments instead. We yeah, we everyone loves Conan. I love his show and seeing his clips on YouTube and stuff. So it's it's interesting to see him like getting some criticism or at least getting ribbed by by yeah, other people yeah. that watch him. Yeah, I wonder what he thinks about uh that guy whose name I've already forgotten. <laughs> uh, oh, James 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 Gordon, sure. James Corden, James Corb, yeah, nailed Corb, it. Corbin Blue, something, Absolutely whatever. Nailed it. Thanks. Uh, all right, we're going to take a minute to read some chat questions. Uh, usually Ooh. we read comments, but I'm going to save Z on here the trouble. So if you've got any questions for him, ask them away in the chat right Ooh, now. Ooh, yeah, please. Or, I mean, you can ask Bob too, and I can, I can, just, uh, I can just hang and listen. Also, Chrono Lambert, thank you for the Prime subscription. Edward Bova says, so Bob and Zeon, uh, what is your hot take? Former and current Elder Scrolls team members share thoughts on state of modern open world games. I'm not reading this whole thing. <laughs> uh, I've never played an Elder Scrolls game. Summarize, summarize his take on the state of modern games that you want me to talk about. Uh, best phone emulator uh, for iPhone right now it's Delta for sure. Delta is pretty. Have you messed around with Delta at all? <laughs> uh, can you guess what I've done with that? You've played uh, Earthbound. Oh, that's a good guess. Uh, I, <laughs> I I downloaded Delta and I've not even opened it. It's just there. <laughs> but I think it's because I have stuff like you know like the Analog Pocket, yeah, and, like all these other systems that I could just be using. And um, but I do I like that it's there. H says RetroArch. I think that it's too much work compared to Delta. Delta is just so much easier. It's just everything just kind of works. Yeah. Any experience with Metal Gear? There, uh, Snake Eater is asking you if you have any experience Ooh, with Metal Gear. I've never played Snake Eater, but I, it's on my list. But I also I want to play two first. I started it and I got to the snake bit, and uh, and then just fell off. Um, but the I snake played Metal bit? Gear Solid One. In in Metal Gear Solid. Oh, right. No, no. Sorry. I said that a little out of order. I played the snake bit in Metal Gear Solid 2. Oh, okay. Right. I understand. Um, and then, I mean, it's been so long. I guess I, I don't have to be cagey about it. But yeah, then I got to the second character and then I was like, all right. You know, a lot of people did when the game came out. <laughs> that's, yeah. how, that's how people experienced <laughs> how that was. game was. They oh, were like, who's man. this fucking guy? I don't want to play as this guy. And then they just stopped yeah. playing. I really um, like him in in his own like spin-off game Rising. I think Raiden's or Raiden or whatever is pretty cool, but yeah, something about it. I just I mean, I fall off games all the time, but have you are you a big Metal Gear guy? Yeah, I played uh basically all of them. The only one I didn't play all of the way through is Peace Walker, the the PSP game. Uh I oh, keep really? getting like towards the end and and stopping it uh for whatever reason. Um but I always hear yeah. good things about that too, but like, I mean, unless if we're talking about like Metal Gear Acid or uh, Survive oh, or something like I don't count those, I don't count the yeah. Acid games. Um, but they're all I, I love it, they're all amazing. I also really like stealth games. Um, the Game Boy game is surprisingly really good. Oh, yeah, did you pick up a copy of that and let like Bob borrow it or something like that? Uh, that yeah, memory? would uh, would uh, oh my god, I just said, I'm so sorry, <laughs> yep, brain fart. Wood, uh, Wood did borrow it and played a decent chunk of it, which was surprising. That's the only Metal Gear game that he's played for the most part. After that, then he picked up uh, Ground Zeroes, which is good okay. uh, if you want some Metal Gear experience. Uh, but you, what a, what a, what a, also a weird like starting point. I love, I love Metal Gear, the Game Boy one, <laughs> yeah, and the, and the the demo on PS4, the Ground Zeroes is great. It's like an hour. Yeah, you jump in. It's fucking awesome. Uh, that does sound nice. The Metal Gear Game Boy game is on the RG three five XX. That's sick. I do like. I do like it. You could put it on your analog pocket. Ooh. Um, Zion, did you like the Wolf Den podcast? Would you be down to replace Bob and make a show with Will? Well, um, having never actually talked to Will before, I feel like I can't really <laughs> give um, give a solid, uh, you know, 
in, uh, input on that. Uh, but I would definitely come back if for some reason Will isn't around again. I would I would very happily be the 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 fill in um, guest whenever. Oh my god! But did you guys like me? Rather, can I bounce <laughs> the question back? Would you be fine if I replaced Bob? No, that's not okay. But <laughs> these these people think they want that. They think they want me gone. But you'll see. Do they really? You'll be begging for me back. Ah, they always uh, do. Mr. Rock PR says, do you do any of you think this is oh, I got to scroll up now. I'm messing up everything. Do, do you, any of you think this is possible? I think GameCube on Nintendo Switch Online could work if Nintendo just let you choose which game to actually download in the app. Unlike the others, which download them all have the covers and choose oh. which to download. That's because uh, people were saying GameCube wouldn't work on Nintendo Switch Online because the file sizes are too big. Hmm. I don't think that's really an issue. I don't think it's an issue if they just let you download all of the GameCube games at once because I they're big, but they're not that big. Yeah, and maybe it won't really be that many games either because otherwise they'd start like cannibalizing the like HD remasters that they've put out already for some of these games too. And so like I feel like if GameCube ever comes, then it will just be like a a really small um, pool of games like Mario Party Five and Luigi's Mansion One and like the the odama the game where you like yell into the no wait the switch doesn't have a microphone so never well i guess it i guess it could but like i think it'll just be really small weird stuff um, i think there's a rumor that the switch 2 might have a microphone in it uh which ooh. would make ds possible um ten dogs yeah dude i don't i don't really want to spend time with that but i i'd be happy if they, they did that i do think one of the big issues would be uh how they handle the remasters like you just said like pigman yeah. and, and and metroid um because oh right metroid i don't see like it it seems obvious to us like just put the just put the shitty version on the toast switch online it'll have no fanfare it'll just be the rom it, it is what it is but that would be an issue for consumers like the like the, the regular people i feel like nintendo would have they'd be thinking really hard about how to market that to just regular people and regular people are going to be like why would i spend 40 dollars on this version of metroid prime when i already have it in my library yeah. you know yeah meanwhile that's the yeah, shitty it, version and it's different for something like like link's awakening i think the i don't know if it's the regular in the game boy the dx version or what but but they're on nintendo switch online now and um, mario 64 is on the 64 app even though it's on the 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 removed um uh, Mario 3D All Stars Collection, you know, so they they kind of double dip a bit here and there, but it feels like they're calculated with that that choice. I think. Uh, all Maz writes in the chat in all caps. Bob, do you have the best emulator for Android 14? Because RetroArch doesn't work for 14. Ooh, you're you're kind of screwed. Uh, Maddie Memzoid Memzoid says try L Lemuroid Lemuroid. Uh, that is in overlay for RetroArch, so you're just kind of fucked. Like, I really don't think you're going to get much with Android 14. You can try... What are, the, what are those web browser ones called? What's the one? Afterplay. You can try Afterplay. That You might have a good time with that. I'm uh, learning so much today. Hey, if you ever need any emulator stuff, you let me know. Oh, I, uh, I have, actually, haven't I? <laughs> e -e -e -e. Last time I remember, the file size of all GameCube games was 1.2 terabytes at most. Every GameCube game? Did I say Game Boy? I meant GameCube. 1.2 oh. terabytes for every single GameCube game. I'm not one of those guys that has, like, full libraries of, of retro systems. I don't right. want that many games. I just want the games that I'm actually going to play. It is too much choice. Um, yeah right like it's like the netflix problem i think it because I've, I've had that before where you know like back in the day when i i think i was a kid and didn't have as many physical games and stuff and now i'm I'm pretty i'm pretty diehard like i'll just buy it digitally or whatever um or physical and, and play it that way but but i do remember like playing a gba emulator when i was a kid or super nintendo ones and just like yeah, maybe you felt this, but like you just like will hop through from game to game for every ten minutes or every thirty minutes, and like nothing can hold your attention. And that that is a fun thing to have, but um, but it it's also kind of nice to be kind of boxed into your choice. 
that's like choice paralysis i just don't like thumbing through all of them to get to the one that i want you know oh I, yeah i want just the ones that i like to be right in front of my face and mm -hmm. you could do that with like favorites and stuff but no it's not oh I, yeah i yeah. don't need the ones that i don't want to play why are they there at all just so i can be like i yeah. have every game i don't need that in my life <laughs> I do kind of like that with the Steam Deck, how you like you can really quickly like flip between in like on like the the default OS that you can like quickly see which games you have installed and which ones you just own and aren't in installed. Um, I think that's really slick, and I kind of wish the Switch had something like that because, yeah, like I, otherwise I just I keep everything like, what's it called? Um, like when I'm done playing a game and it's it's ten gigs or whatever, I'll delete it, but like leave it in the Switch still, so that way mm -hmm. I know I own it or whatever. But yeah the steam's ui is amazing uh you like and it I, yeah. I wish more stuff would work like that like uh when i get a windows handheld a lot of the times i just have it boot up into steam immediately and it turn it basically turns into a steam deck uh all right i think we're i think that's a podcast baby what do you think yeah we, we did the thing i think we did it dude wow and i think i and i think it was you know this is kind of my podcast, so I don't want to be pretentious, but I think it was a no. pretty good podcast. Oh, that's really, yeah. I think, I I mean, I can't say, but I had a lot of fun. <laughs> it was really nice. So uh, smooth. The time flew. Like, I'd be looking at the clock, and I was like, what? We've been talking for an hour? <laughs> that's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, where can they find you? Sure. Uh, so I, I, we kind of talked about it a bit at the beginning, but I imagine not everyone here uh from the beginning and if you are thank you but yeah i make videos for nintendo life uh so you can head over to the youtube channel i write articles sometimes too and do interviews on the on the written side uh on that on our nintendolife.com website and uh but otherwise you can just find me at z-i-o-n-d-o-o-d -O 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 like it is says in the corner down there which is so so nice and so slick mm -hmm. and if you go to my twitter actually my the pinned tweet is the street pass video that uh that we were talking about way earlier at the start of the of the podcast so. or just go to youtube and type in street pass and it's the first true. video true we, we proved point. we proved it today that that, that was cool that it's yeah, that, that popular cool yeah <laughs> so thanks for being here on such yeah, short thanks notice for having me. uh thanks for being here everybody who's watching i appreciate it uh next week we'll be back on tuesday as always uh and hopefully we'll be on youtube as well because i'll be in the other room and it won't be as much of a pain in the ass oh yeah i yeah. will be on twitch tomorrow hopefully uh, the uh the Nintendo uh World Championship game comes out. Tomorrow. Oh, dude, we didn't even talk about that. I've played so much of that already. Really? Oops. Yeah, yeah. Oh shit! I did want to talk about it. I didn't know you were I'm playing. Oh, so sorry. Whoops. Uh, I just learned today that there's no leaderboard, and I'm very upset about that. It's it's a weird thing where I think it's like a weekly leaderboard, uh, almost where like you you compete for the highest score. And then you input it into the machine, and then the machine goes, okay, you can't look at it. You can't look at the scores until the tournament's over. And then they reveal who has the best score. For the week? I, it's, it's either weekly or bi-weekly. And I think they call them challenges or something. Okay, that's um, not too bad. Yeah. Also, like, it could be, like, this could be different when the game actually launches because it doesn't launch till tomorrow they could change the whole leaderboard uh, layout i think i think the the reason there's no like dead set leaderboard right now is just so that way like it doesn't get not stale um but they they release like challenge packs so like this week you can play like four little snippets or three little snippets of these games and you you submit your highest score uh, in the moment and then off to the internet it goes and the next week it'll be a different set of mini games and I think it kind of can incentivize people to like go back and not feel like, like oh the the leaderboards are like um, ransacked or uh, destroyed by like Nintendo Gamer twenty four every <laughs> week like time and time again unless if unless if Nintendo Gamer shows up so they did a similar thing with Mario Maker with the Ninji speed runs that was like kind oh, of a, okay. a, a weekly or or monthly situation where there was one level that you wanted to speed run um, okay okay how did how did you feel about that because i know you i love loved that that was so cool yeah. and I'm, I'm pissed that it doesn't exist anymore but that's why i'm excited for this game because it's a similar thing and uh i just want to be able to like have some records that could show up you know i want to be able to compete for some things so yeah i, I don't know exactly because... how it works i'm excited to try it out and find out how it works
it does i will say it does keep track of your personal highest scores like it's always visible like if you're playing a new mini game and you're competing for you know the the weekly challenge it'll still show like your personal best on screen while you're playing it which i think okay. is kind of cool because then if you're streaming people can like they can always see what your best time is and then if you beat it in the moment it'll like just ping and it'll it'll That's tell great. you and yeah it's I'm excited for you to check it out, but I'm, I'm, I consider I'm myself fun. a casual speedrunner because I uh, don't really have any like uh, leaderboards or records on any games that mean anything. Yeah. <laughs> I just kind of go through Mario Maker and try to get records on some of the levels there, but it's cool. never any like really popular levels or anything. Uh, so I'm excited for this game to compete with best times, you know, on, on certain yeah. little mini games with other people. Um, so I, I should ask, are you are you picking this up tomorrow? or and yeah. streaming it or yeah cool. i'm gonna download it uh digitally um yeah so i'll be streaming it uh more expensive and it comes with like bits and bobs but i'm yeah, pretty much all digital have. on on the switch um yeah so i'll be picking that up and streaming it tomorrow i also uh have a colonoscopy on friday so that means oh, tomorrow my, haven't you had I'm, those before oh yeah baby they love my butt uh tomorrow so, yeah. i will be back <laughs> I will be uh, doing the detox where I can't eat anything and I'll be shitting all day. So you're going to get a very interesting Bob playing this game for the first time tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Good thing these challenges are short. That's perfect. Also, the Switch is portable. Oh, no. I can just just take it with me. (laughs) Oh, my God. Guys, thanks for being here. The podcast will be back on Tuesday next week. Say hello and goodbye to Zeon here. We are going to raid Taco, who's streaming oh, on Twitch. Dope. Yeah, you I know love him. Taco. I yeah. Knew, I knew you knew him, and that's why we're raiding him. <laughs> that's so cool. Uh, I don't know what he's doing. He's playing Shadow of the Colossus. Oh, so, dude, what a, what a guy. So go say hello to him. Also, if you listen to this after the fact, go... Check out the Street Pass video and Zeon on all the social mm-hmm. medias they talked about before. Oh, yeah, you're but, in it. I forget. Hey, if that's the reason these people want to go over there, then sure. <laughs> I think it's nice. It's nice. Uh, bye, everybody. Say hi to Taco for us. Say hello.